Hey everyone, it's Zinnia here, and today I wanted to show you how to make a scrolling adventure game on the phone. So yeah, by the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to make your own game like this one, with a character that walks between different areas, can collect items, and more. So yeah, let's get started! So in Octo Studio, I'll tap Create New Project, and then I'll tap Choose a Sprite, and you can choose whatever you want to be the main character of your game. I think I'll choose the penguin. And then you can choose one of the backdrops in your world. I'm gonna choose this one. And to give our game multiple locations, let's choose another one. I'm going to upload an image. Okay, so we've got our character and some of the backdrops in our world. Now, step one, let's make this character be able to move with the arrow keys. So to get this character moving, in the motion category, we can drag out this move block. And if I tap it, that will make the character move. In your game, you could also put in a smaller number here to adjust the amount that it moves by. I think I like 10. And let's get some arrow keys going. So I'm going to add another sprite to be an arrow key button. And if I scroll down, where are they? I know they're here. Ah, yes. Okay, I'm gonna add this right arrow key button. I'm gonna make it a bit smaller. And we want to make it so that when this button is pressed, the character moves. So to do that, we could say, when I tap, on this button, we can send out a message and call it move right. And then we can go to the penguin sprite and we can have it move when it gets that message. So let's try it out. And there we go. Now I can tap on this arrow key button and the penguin moves. So we've got a right arrow. Let's add a left arrow as well. Should be pretty easy to duplicate this sprite. Click the swap button to replace it with the left arrow image. And then I can just have it send a message move left. And I'll go back to the penguin and I can say, when move left is received, I'll drag out another move block and I'll have it move 10 in this direction. So it goes that way. And so let's try that out. Okay, and so now we can make it move right and left. And you know, when it's moving left, it kind of looks like it's walking backwards. So to fix that, I'm gonna drag out a set direction block and I can have it face this way. And so I'll have it face that direction when it goes to move left. And then I'll drag out another set direction block and set the direction this way when it moves right. So now it actually faces the way it's walking. And for fun, let's also add a jump button. So the same as I made the other two buttons, I will make this one send out a message jump when it's pressed. And then going back to the penguin sprite, I can say when jump is received, I'll have it jump. So let's try that out. I can tap the up arrow and it jumps very high. You could keep it that high in your game, but I think maybe I'll have it jump something like 20. Let me see that. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so we can move our character around with arrow keys. Now for step two, let's make it so that if you walk to the edge of the screen, you go to the next backdrop. And in the when to start category, there's this block, when touching the edge. And so I could say, when the character is touching the right edge of the screen, I could have the backdrop switch to the next backdrop. So let's just try that out. And so I can cross over there and I can just duplicate this code and I'll say, when the character touches the left edge of the screen, just the left edge, then I will set the backdrop to the previous backdrop. So let's try that out. And there you go. All right, so we can walk between areas. Now for step three, let's make it so there are some actual objects in the world moving past us as we walk along. So I'll tap add a sprite to add an object and you know, you can add whatever you want to your game. I think I'm gonna add this mountain sprite and sort of have it be a rock. So right now we can move the main character around, but the rock stays in place. And what if we want the rock to move past the character as it's walking? Well, let me go to the main character sprite. And you know, every time the right arrow is pressed, it moves to the right 10. But what if we take this object in the world and we say, when the right arrow is pressed, move to the left by 10. So let me just try that out. And so now the character walks past the object. Um, one thing, let me make this object be layered behind the character. So I'll drag out this and say layer behind. And so right now we can walk that way, but we can't walk past it that way. So to add that, I'm just gonna duplicate this code and I'll say, when I receive the message, move left, have the object move that way. And so now you can go that way or that way. And by having the object move in the opposite direction of the character, it really looks like the character is walking past. Also, one thing you might notice is that the rock just sort of stays in place when we walk to a new scene. How about we make it go to a random location when we get to a new scene? So I can do that by saying, you know, when the backdrop switches to, you know, this backdrop, I can make it go to a randomized position on the ground. So to randomize the position on the ground, I can just drag out a go to block and make X be random. And I'll make it go there at lightning speed. 
So now let's test it out. I go to a new location and the rock went to a randomized spot. I'll also duplicate this code and have it do the same thing when the backdrop switches to this one. So it will randomize the position in this direction too. Okay, so we've got things in the world that are scrolling past as we walk. Lastly, for step four, let's make it so that there's an item we can collect. I think in my game, I'll have the main character be collecting feathers. So actually to make this feather, I'm just going to duplicate the rock because we also want the feather to be scrolling past the player just the same way the rock does. So by duplicating, we'll get all that same code. So here it works, but we just have two rocks. Let's replace this one with a feather. So I'll tap here to replace it. And then you can replace it with whatever artwork you want for your item. Uh, so I'll choose the feather for mine. And you know what? I will make it a little smaller so I can walk around, but I want to make it so that when the penguin runs into the feather, the feather gets collected. And I can do that by saying for the feather, when it touches the penguin sprite, well, I can make it hide. So let's try that. So there we go, running into it and it hides. Maybe I'll also make it play a sound effect when that happens. And then when I go to a new backdrop, let me make the feather show up again. So I can say when the backdrop switches to this one, show, or when it switches to this one, show. So let's try that out. I go back. Now the feather is back. Perfect. And last but not least, how about we make it so that the game keeps track of how many feathers the player has collected. So I can go to the more blocks category and I can say change variable by one. And I'll just make a new variable called feathers. And so now feathers increases by one when we collect one and I'll make it set the variable feathers to zero when the game starts. So let's try it all out. So in my game, I can walk around, I can collect feathers at various locations throughout the game, the objects scroll past me, oh, sometimes the feathers appear right there, and there you go. This can be a base for a scrolling adventure game. Let me know what you'd like to see in a part two of the series, and I hope you have fun making your adventure games. I'll see you in the next video.